I was saying yes, but Rico from Street Scores and the Washington Commanders, most notably Josh Harris, is being linked to the elite NFL mind of Don Aponte as potential EVP of football operations, elite football mind, team building history, cap space guru. We're going to talk about all of that, the history, where she's been, how she's working for Roger Goodell, like directly under Roger Goodell right now, and crazy connections that she may have, and as to why this could actually be a real possibility that we may be exploring if josh harris were to hire her she would probably more than likely come with a different title than gm so we got to talk about that all of that and more but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff on the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release an informative and a pna video just like this one be on the lookout for all of the content that i'm coming out with super excited man it's a lot to talk about even though our regular season is ending that does not mean that we don't have a lot of stuff to talk about i still haven't done my gm candidates video my head coach candidates video and i'm working on exclusive content for channel members only but let's go ahead and get to this video right now. Let's get it. All right, so this all started, my antennas went up when I saw Nikki Javala, who's very close to the commander's organization, and I always credit her and John Kahn with being as accurate as possible. They're not the type to try to be as quick as possible to be one of the first to put out any information. They're not trying to be first. They care more about being accurate. And Nikki Javala said that she had been hearing around that Donna Ponte's name as a potential EVP a football operations candidate is starting to be thrown out there. The commanders are linked, and that could be a real thing. An NFL GM, an anonymous one, asked, why is the team not even hired Donna Ponce yet? It makes zero sense to me. She is incredible, unquote. So we got to dive into all of that, man, because historically, she was with the Jets as an accountant. Then she worked her way up to a salary cap analyst and pro personnel assistant. Then she worked up to manager of football administration and then senior director of football administration. Then she went to work for the NFL for a couple of years as vice president of labor finance. Then the Cleveland Browns for a year as vice president of football administration. Then the Dolphins as senior vice president of football operations. Then the Miami Dolphins got promoted to executive vice president of football administration. And then since 2017, she's been working directly under Roger Goodell as the chief administrator of football operations and i mean that's an incredible position to have that working directly under roger goodell is a little bit different that that definitely hits a little bit different like the the level of experience the amount of hands she's going around shaking and then the prior experience with the jets working her way all the way from accounting all the way up to senior director of football administration before she left and then to have similar positions for the browns and dolphins is incredible man the history is right there this is a guy this is a person well technically this is a woman that you would want a part of the commanders we got to see what type of role we're talking about so ben standig wrote an article for the athletic and when and he talked about different potential gm candidates and things like that and he literally pointed out chief administrator of football operations because with other people like ed dodds he said assistant gm potentially um alec hallaby is currently an assistant gm all of that type of stuff and he even says like connections and things like that and he pointed out like ed dodds for example the connection is brown special team coordinator bubba ventrone coach chief personnel executive morocco brown for alec hallaby Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Johnson. That's a connection there. For her, literally just put all 32 teams. Again, working under Roger Goodell is a different playing field. She's above all of these other potential GM candidates when it comes to power. And then her background in salary cap and finance, that's something that could be huge for us. Because Jason Wright handles the, the, the non-football side of operations, like stadium, team branding, and things like that. Straight business, straight finance. But we're not talking about the, the football finance. We're talking about off the field finance if she were to be brought in as a potential chief administrator of a football operations she would be the one handling the salary cap and contracts and things like that that could be huge of course she will have a lot of player evaluation power as well um but i think that would be really awesome to get her so benjamin standig pointed out in his article beyond harris separating the gm and head coaching jobs 
One potential consideration is adding a president of football operations position to oversee the entire front office. And the beginning of that is that it looks like based on history and reports we're getting from the commander sources themselves, Josh Harris is definitely going to separate GM from head coach. So let's start there. No more coach centric models like Ron Rivera, how he's had for the past few years here, how Bill Belichick has had it for forever with the Patriots where you're the head coach, you're the GM, you're the one that has to sign off on every single thing. We've seen the draft videos. Martin Mayhew as the GM is saying, oh, okay, I'm thinking about getting this guy. This is why Ron Rivera, I basically need you to sign off on it and say yes, because if you don't, then we're not going to take him. That's, the, that's what a coach centric model model is like Ron Rivera is literally like the dictator of the organization Josh Harris is not doing that anymore we're going to a more typical organization setup and structure to where the GM and the head coach are two completely different people and the head coach is under the GM the GM has more power the head coach is right under him and then of course you had a defensive coordinator offensive coordinator all of that type of stuff position group things everything else will fall into place once we get that GM right but what Ben Standing is pointing out is that Josh Harris may even go above and beyond. Some NFL teams have this. Not all NFL teams have this, but we may go hire somebody that's even potentially above the GM or at the very least works alongside the GM on different matters. The GM would be more player based scouting, evaluation, development draft all of that type of stuff the chief administrator of football operations again will be more the salary cap person the contract person the free agency all of that type of stuff so diving deeper into what ben standig said he said that's the model with harris's nba and nhl franchises and typical for those leagues though nfl is a little bit different nba and nhl franchises typically do have somebody slightly above or at least adjacent to the gm the nfl not so typical other teams do it, but not as typical as the NBA and NHL. So that's something to note. But Josh Harris does do it in those leagues. Maybe he brings that exact model. He's like, hey, man, Six has been going to the playoffs. My NHL team is pretty good as well. They went to the playoffs recently as well. So maybe if it's not broke, don't fix it. Even though the NFL doesn't typically do this, maybe I'll bring that exact model to the NFL with me. And you've seen that he's doing a lot of things like he's done previously. Like my boy Tim McGrath that he brought in to basically be our injury consultant. And I did a whole 30 minute breakdown on what he brings to the team and why I'm excited about the hire. That's somebody that he used his expertise once, uh, once upon a time for the Sixers as well. Josh Harris just seems like that if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it worked here, it should be able to work here type of guy. So it's quite likely that we do go and create that role that wasn't here previously. Even though a GM was here, it's going to be a different type of GM. But that's not an entirely new role and new title that somebody didn't have here before Josh Harris got here. Whereas Chief Administrator of Football Operations... I don't even remember the last time we had somebody like that. I guess Bruce Allen. But even with Bruce Allen, it was a little bit different. But that's kind of the closest when I'm saying the type of power that she may have, especially on the contract and, and salary cap side. So continuing with the article, adding an admin role could mean having the final say in personnel and overseeing daily operations with an actual talent evaluator focused on the roster itself. According to league sources, Aponte's background goes beyond standard requirements for a GM or high-ranking ops roles. Quote, why a team has not hired Don Aponte makes zero sense to me, unquote. A current general manager, anonymous general manager, told The Athletic, quote, she's incredible, unquote. Her NFL background began in 1994 as a numbers cruncher and salary cap analyst for the New York Jets before ascending to senior director of football administration like I already broke down. She also held high-ranking operation jobs with the Browns and Miami Dolphins before a second stint in the league office began in 2017. Respect for Aponte permeates throughout the league. Her current role puts her in constant contact with head coaches, general managers, and others armed with questions and complaints. Her boss, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, cited the no-nonsense Aponte as a ready-now candidate during the latest, latest owners meetings. And again, Josh Harris went to the potential GM candidate summit where they had 42 potential GM candidates, and he made one of the biggest impressions there. He was the most active. So, I'm very optimistic about the fact that we may potentially land one of the top GM candidates or even somebody like Aponte's role where it's like a chief administrator of football operations, team president, whatever you want to call them. We could potentially land somebody like that because Josh Harris was one of the most noteworthy owners at that owner meet potential GM candidate summit type of thing. And uh, man, I'm really excited, man. He made a lasting impression and people like Don Aponte probably noticed, okay, this could work. And again, 
what a lot of people mainly know her for, for is basically being a cap guru. Like, she goes crazy. When it comes to cap space, and I know as, com as Commanders fans have complained about the Commanders not utilizing cap space strategies and cheat codes and finding loopholes and weaknesses in the rules and things like that. If you want somebody that can do those type of things, this is your person that you hire. On top of all other things that she's really good at and she could bring to the Commanders organization. I mean, when you literally directly work right under roger goodell again the amount of hands you shake the gms the head coaches like you make that higher first and that potentially leads to us getting a better gm candidate just because she's in the building that's the type of person she is eugene shin already feels like is, is gonna have some sort of power so that may conflict there maybe they can coincide perfectly we'll see because eugene shin is more analytics based she's more salary cap and player personnel based but i think it can work i think we can put all of that together but again my main point is is that even just beyond how great of a job I feel like she would do for the commanders, the relationships that she would bring to this team, the hands she's shaking, the, the I mean, it would definitely increase our chances of getting a really good GM, a really good head coach and things like that. Because people, if anything, above all else, highly respect her. Again, when you work directly under Roger Goodell, I know I keep saying it, but that's serious, man. I don't think people understand. And when it comes to her connections to say somebody like a Caleb Williams, Things get very interesting because she was working with the Jets at the same time as Cliff Kingsbury was there, who is Cl Caleb Williams' lead recruiter, developer, and of course, his head coach at USC. So maybe she makes it more likely for the commanders to be far more aggressive to doing whatever it takes to land that number one overall pick to get Caleb Williams. You never know. If you're a Caleb Williams guy, if you're a guy that wants to drive Caleb Williams, hiring Donna Ponte increases those chances. Another random connection to Caleb Williams is that when she was working with the Browns, Bobby Ingram was there. And his son is a close family friend to the Caleb Williams family. Super random, but you never know. Maybe that's just the last thing that tips the scales our way. And maybe that's why Aponte and, and she's able to convince Eugene Shin and Josh Harris and whoever the next GM is, we need to do whatever it takes to get Caleb Williams. The connections are there. Now, there is a weird connection that I am worried about that, you know, some people are pointing out the fact that Bill Belichick was her mentor back in the day. And that could make Bill Belichick more likely. But again, Josh Harris is not going with a coach-centric approach. So I highly doubt that has anything to it. But just to warn you, there's that connection there. But I'm more so just warning y'all to be funny. I think that will not hold anything. Honestly, a lot of these connections may not matter that much at all. But the Cliff Kingsbury one, you never know. That may actually have a little bit of impact on everything. Because at the very least... There's a link to a very trustworthy source for the commander's front office and coaching staff to really get to know Caleb Williams. And I'm talking off the field, get to know Caleb Williams, like work ethic, film study habits, a lot of character questions, concerns and stuff floating around. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of the teams that that are looking to potentially draft a Caleb Williams is going to do all of the research that they can. But when it comes to Don Aponte, who has a clear connection to Cliff Kingsbury, they had a great relationship when they were working together with the Jets. Maybe we'll have like a slight advantage on getting the actual real spill on the situation. Not just the generic, oh, Caleb Williams does everything right. He does this, he does that. Maybe Aponte's personal connection to Cliff Kingsbury and the history dates far back enough to where he'll give us like the real 100% honest answer whether it's good or bad maybe he'll just be like man you're a real friend so like somebody that I actually really care about I'm gonna give you the real answer not just the generic he works hard he's the he's first one on the field last one all those you know generic things that every coach is probably gonna get in the whole draft process but you never know man we'll see how that goes and I'm sorry, man. As much as I want her in the commander's front office, if that has anything to do with Bill Belichick potentially becoming our head coach, I don't want it. But again, I'm like I've already said, I highly doubt that's ever going to have any impact on that. Bill Belichick is not coming to the commanders. I could, I could bet y'all money for that right now. But one bad thing also is that there probably will be high level of competition for her. I mean, the exact reason that I'm so excited about us potentially bringing her in is the same reason that a lot of teams are probably potentially wanting to bring her in at whatever role, even if they hire her as a GM, whatever. Even if we hire her as a GM or a, an alternative role like the one I already gave you or maybe some team president role, some Bruce Allen-like thing, maybe a little different. Whatever it is, there's a lot of teams probably fighting for her. That's probably, I don't know for sure, but the reason she worked for the NFL for a little while and then she came back out 
after working with the NFL to work with the Browns and the Dolphins, maybe the Browns and Dolphins just really wanted her. And then after she had those stints with them and was like, yeah, that's cool, but I prefer my NFL job. And so I'm pretty sure there are going to be a lot of other teams trying to steal her away from Roger Goodell. I mean, again, like I've already said, man, you're working on the Roger Goodell. There's something to that. That's a different type of GM candidate right there, front office candidate, whatever it may be. Now, shouts out to Ref the District for pointing this out. I just want to bring this up in the 32 years since the Redskins last Super Bowl win in 91. And again, I wasn't even alive yet. I wasn't there to see any of our Super Bowl victories, sadly. We've had 12 head coaches and they've gone 213, 298 and three with a 0.415 winner percentage. Terrible. We have three playoff wins. Pathetic. 36 different starting quarterbacks. Depressing. Three double digit winning seasons. Awful. 13 double digit losing seasons. Embarrassing. 23 seasons of 0.500 or worse. I mean, miserable and a negative 1,368 point differential over that time. That's re my whole life of being a Burgundy and Gold fan has really just been not only just average like we say sometimes, it's honestly been terrible because I remember one other random stat the ref the district didn't include and make sure you follow them on Twitter, follow them on YouTube everywhere. Shouts out to them because I bring their names up a lot. Great follows everywhere. Um, another statistic is that we're the only NFL team that hasn't had an 11 win season in like a certain span. Since like the last time we did it, every other NFL team has done it. No matter how bad historically they've been how bad they are now we're the last team to have an 11 win season in the entire nfl right now that's embarrassing that's really embarrassing so we'll see how this goes i bring those stats up to say that hopefully bringing in a don aponte digs us out of the ugly mud that we've been in since the last time we won a super bowl i've already told y'all this is the most optimistic i've been about a commanders burgundy and gold redskins washington football team whatever you want to call this offseason in a long time because this is, this is the biggest clean house we've ever done this is the biggest sweep everything let's start all the way over build it from the ground up we're really from the top down because we're going to hire a lot of these front office people then they're going to bring in the coaches all that type of stuff this is going to be the first time we've done this probably since i've been alive well we just completely scrapped everything new owner and all of that i'm super excited also before we get up out of here in random news the parent company of the washington commanders has a new name pro football llc just random news I want to throw out there. This is not anything major. It's just officially gone down now because this process started immediately after Josh Harris bought the team. So this isn't like any real new news, but it's like official now that they now are the Pro Football LLC. So maybe the one big takeaway that you can take from this, I guess, is that this opens up our possibility of changing the name maybe because we're not directly attached to Washington Commander specifically we're the pro football LLC that owns the Bregney and Gold right now so that leaves it to where you can name the team whatever you want to if we explore that and even if which is a huge if in itself it won't happen anytime soon so we might as well go ahead and let that stuff go now also Ron Rivera declined to name a starting quarterback for Sunday just to let you know um and he indicated that he will do so Wednesday, which is tomorrow. But I'm just here to let you know that I personally do not care at this point. I'm done. I'm defeated. It, I, it, to me, Sam Howell makes the most sense, but I really honestly don't care at this point. Also, shouts out to Nikki Javala for this. January 2nd, to date, in recent Washington Commander football team Redskin history. Just everything that's happened on January 2nd since 2020. 2020, Ron Rivera was introduced as head coach. This is today, January 2nd. 2021, Chase Roulier gets a four-year extension and Alex Smith is named the starter for the season finale in Philly. 2022, a railing collapses at FedEx Field and narrowly misses Jalen Hurts after an Eagles win. 2023, Rivera says he doesn't regret starting Carson Wentz or Taylor Heineke in a loss to the Browns. And I, was that the same day, too, that he was like, I, he didn't know we could be eliminated from playoff contention? And then 2024, the season was all but ended three weeks ago. I was hoping that maybe we get some news like who our next potential GM and head coaching candidates are. Something monumental like those other dates. But, you know, it's cool, though. Just to let you know, shout out to Nikki Javala for tweeting that. And once I saw it, I was like, you know, just a fun fact to go ahead and throw into the video. Also, just to let you know, we need to be rooting for the Saints in this upcoming Falcon Saints game as far as between us and the Patriots finally getting that second overall pick right now we edge the Patriots but that we and there's several games I talked about this in my video that I did a couple of days ago where I broke down how we have the number two overall pick and what we need to do to keep it but just want to emphasize 
that the main game that we need to be rooting for is the Saints over the Falcons. Just to warn you. Again, there's several. I did a whole breakdown on that in that other video on all of the games and who we need to be rooting for in those games. But we need to focus most of our attention on the Saints because the Commanders played and beat the Falcons earlier this year while the Patriots played and lost to the Saints. A Falcons win on Sunday would lower New England's strength of schedule while also boosting Washington's. Just an Atlanta win could mathematically lift the Patriots over the Commanders for that second overall pick. So let's go Saints. I mean, y'all already know I'm a big Falcons hater. As much as y'all hate the Cowboys, I hate the Falcons. So I'm always rooting against them. But then at the same time, I was kind of starting to root for them because I wanted them to get a later draft pick. That's how deep the hate runs for the Falcons. I don't even want them to be in range of getting an elite player. But at the same time, I'm not petty enough to cut my nose to spite my face. So Falcons, I'm going to need y'all to lose. Because even though I really want y'all to have a later draft pick, I prefer for the commanders to have a higher draft pick above all else. That's what matters the most. Second overall pick. Let's get it. Hey, so Saints, hey, man, I'm going to need y'all to do y'all job. Derek Carr, don't play around, man. Alvin Kamara, you're from Atlanta, man. Do me a favor, man. Atlanta person to another Atlanta native. Hey, man, let's get it. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and a PNA video just like this one. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Are you excited about us potentially hiring this person? If you do want to hire a Ponte, what role would you want her to have? Would you want her to just literally come in and just be straight up the GM? Or would you prefer for her to be some somebody higher or adjacent to the GM handling other things like salary cap and things like I broke down like that. So let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video and stay tuned because again I have so much content on the way. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.